This is no one from nowhere, and you are, and I am, a spirit of God. Today I want to talk to you about Anunnaki, Sumerian myth, Ishtar and Enki, transfer of Mies from Eridu to Uruk. First a joke, who was the most high-tech biblical prophet? Moses, because he used a tablet in a cloud. <laughs> Galatians 5.1 For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. In this myth, we have Enki, the god of water and wisdom, pictured to the right of the bird, who held the tablets of destinies in his home and first city on earth called the Redu. Aridu lied on the southwestern edge of Mesopotamia, sacred to the Anunnaki god Enki, and Aridu notably may be at least 250,000 years old. So in this myth, Enki gives the tablets of arts and civilization to King Anu's favorite granddaughter, Inanna Ishtar, pictured far left. And to their home city called Uruk. From the Epic of Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh, who according to the myth, had built the six mile long brick wall in this Mesopotamian city called Uruk. Also very important to note that Izamud, pictured to the far right, the two-faced Izamud, Inky's minister was one of the ones one of numbers of sea creatures who inhabited the watery depths of the Abzu. And it is mentioned in this myth. Also within this myth is Incum, a male, and Ninkum, a female, who Enki sends after Inanna Ishtar's boat when he realizes, after too much to drink, that Inanna Ishtar had stolen the Mies, or the Tablets of Destinies, from Enki. It is a very safe analysis to mention that this myth text could go back to the days of Atlantis. The Sumerian mythology and the Mies in the mythology is one of the tools, maybe computerized type, more than we even can comprehend, is the way the Anunnaki gods made checks and balances and was and is foundational to social institutions, religious practices, technologies, behaviors, and mores, and human conditions that make civilization. At least to begin with in the Sumerian civilization, this and more myths make understanding the relationship between humanity and the Anunnaki gods. The Mies and the Tablets of Destinies were originally collected by Enlil, and then Enki had guardianship until one day Ishtar stole the Tablets of Destinies, or the Mies, from Enki. All the world can relate to the Mies, like here's a short list of Mies, is fear, terror, wisdom, attention, music, building trades, weapons, power, godship, food, kingship, DNA, pretty much everything that makes up your community and your regional community and the entire world are the Anunnaki Mies or Tablets of Destinies. Everything we see and don't see. This magnificent myth with its particularly charming stories involves Inanna Ishtar, the Queen of Heaven, and Enki, the Lord of Wisdom. Its contents are of profound significance for the study of the history and progress of civilization, since it contains a list of over 100 divine decrees governing all those cultural achievements which, according to the more or less superficial analysis of the Sumerian scribes and thinkers, make up the warp and woof of Sumerian civilization. However, no translation was attempted in all these years since the story seemed to make 
no connected sense, and what could be made out seemed to lack intelligent motivation. A very important, significant verse in this passage reads, O oh, my name of my power, O oh, name of my power, to the bright Inanna, my daughter, I shall present the arts of woodworking, metalworking, writing, tool making, leather working, building, and basket weaving. Pure Inanna took them. Inanna, queen of heaven, the tolitary goddess of Eric, is anxious to increase the welfare and prosperity of her city, to make it the center of Sumerian civilization and thus to exalt her own name and fame. She therefore decides to go to Eridu, the ancient and hoary seat of Sumerian culture, where Enki, the Lord of Wisdom, who knows the very heart of the gods, dwells in his watery abyss called the Absu. For Enki has under his charge all the divine decrees that are fundamental to civilization. And if she see, can see to obtain them by fair means or foul, and bring them to her beloved city, Uruk, the glory and her own will indeed be unsurpassed. So plainly she's meaning to get the tablets of destinies by fair means or foul play. So as we go on, as she approaches the Absu of Eridu, Inky, no doubt taken in by her charms, calls his messenger Izamud and thus addresses him, quote, Come, my messenger Izamud, give ear to my instructions. A word I will say to thee, take my word. The maid all alone has directed her step to the Abzu, and Nana all alone has directed her step to the Abzu. Have the maid enter the Abzu of Eridu. Have Anana enter the Abzu of Eridu. Give her to eat barley cake with butter. Pour for her cold water that freshens the heart. Give her to drink date wine in the face of the lion. For her, make for her. At the pure table, the table of heaven, speak to Anana words of greeting. So Inky's planning on getting her drunk. <laughs> Isamud does exactly as bidden by his master, and Anana and Inky sit down to feast and have a banquet. After their hearts had become happy with drink, Inky exclaims, O oh, my name of power, O oh, my name of power, to the pure Anana, my daughter, I shall present pure Anana. And she took them. O oh, my name of power, O oh, my name of power, to the pure Nana, my daughter, I shall present the exalted scepter, staffs, the exalted shrine, shepherdship, and kingship. Pure Anana took them. So Enki being drunk thus presents several of the Mies at a time, over 100 divine decrees, which are the basis of the culture, cultural pattern of Sumerian civilization. And when it is realized that this myth was inscribed as early as 2000 BC and that the concepts involved were no doubt current centuries earlier, it is no exaggeration to state that no other civilization outside of the Egyptian can at all compare in age and quality with that developed by the Sumerians. Among these divine decrees presented by Enki to Inanna, are those referring to lordship, godship, the exalted and enduring crown, the throne of kingship, the exalted scepter, the exalted shrine, shepherdship, kingship, the numerous priestly offices, truth, descent into the netherworld and ascend from it, the standard, even the flood, sexual intercourse and prostitution, the legal tongue and the libious tongue, art, the holy cult chambers, the Haria duel of heaven or the rulership of heaven, music, eldership, heroship, and power, enmity between the man and the woman, like in Genesis 3, state forwardness, the destruction of cities, and lamentation, rejoicing of the heart, falsehood, 
the rebel land, goodness and justice, the craft of the carpenter, metal worker, scribe, smith, letter, leather worker, mason, and basket weaver, wisdom and understanding, purification, fear and outcry, the kindling flame and the consuming flame, weariness, the shout of victory, counsel, the troubled heart, judgment, and decision, and also musical in instruments. Pretty much whatever you see today, this is what the Mies or the Tablets of Destinies represent. Everything. Anana is only too happy to accept the gifts offered her by the drunken Inky. She takes them, loads them on her boat of heaven, and makes off for Uruk with her precious cargo. But after the effects of the banquet had worn off, Inky noticed that the divine decrees were gone from their usual place. He turns to Izamud, and the latter informs him that he, Inky himself, had presented them to his daughter Inanna. So Inky greatly changes his mind and decides to prevent the boat of heaven from reaching Uruk at all costs. So, he dispatches his messenger Izuma together with a group of sea monsters to follow Inanna and her boat to the first of the seven stopping stations that are situated between the Abzu of Aridu and Uruk. Here, the sea monsters are to seize the boat of heaven from Inanna, and Inanna herself, however, must be permitted to continue her journey to Uruk afoot. This passage covering Inky's instructions to Izamud and Izamud's conversation with Anana, who reproaches her father Inky as an Indian giver, meaning she had to give back the tablets after Inky gave them to her, will undoubtedly go down as a classic poetic, poetic gem. It runs as follows. The prince calls his messenger Izamud. The prince calls his messenger Izamud. Inky gives the word to the good name of heaven. Quote, O oh, my messenger Izamud, my good name of heaven. O oh, my king Inky, here I stand forever in praise. The boat of heaven, where now has it arrived? At the quay Adel, it has arrived. Go and let the sea monsters seize it from her. Izamud does as bidden, overtakes the boat of heaven, and says to Inanna, O oh, my queen, the father has sent me to thee. O oh, Inanna, the father has sent me to thee. Thy father exalted in his speech. Inky exalted in his utterance. His great words are not to go unheeded. Holy Inanna answers him, My father, in quotes, My father, what has he spoken to thee? What has he said to thee? His great words are not to go unheeded. What prey are they? My king has spoken to me. Inky has said to me, Let Anana go to Uruk. But thou, bring me back the boat of heaven to Eridu. Holy Anana says to the messenger Izamud, My father, who pray has he changed his word to me? Why has he spoken his righteous words to me? Why has he defiled his great words to me? My father has spoken to me falsehood, has spoken to me falsehood. Falsely has he uttered the name of his power, the name of the Abzu. Barely had she uttered these words, the sea monsters seized the boat of heaven. Anana says to her messenger, Ninishabar, Come, my true messenger of Inanna, my messenger of favorable words, my carrier of true words, whose hand never falters, whose foot never falters. Save the boat of heaven and Inanna's presented decrees. So Inky sends Izumud accompanied by various sea monsters to seize the boat of heaven at each of the seven stopping points between Aridu and Uruk. And each time, Ninasabar comes to Inanna's rescue. Finally, Inanna and her boat arrive safe and sound at Uruk, where it admits jubilation and feasting on the part of its delighted inhabitants. 
She unloads the divine decrees one at a time. The poem ends with a speech addressed by Inky to Anana, but the text is seriously damaged and is not clear whether it is reconciliatory or retaliatory in character, meaning was he agreement or not. So we have a few firsts here from the Sumerian, which is the first of everything in known civilization. But we also have the poetic justice of an Indian giver and giving away your pearls to pigs, per se, like Inky did when he was drunk. I leave you today with John 8.32. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Because you were born with the DNA of the Most High Gods. Because you are, and I am, a Spirit of God.